Don't you sometimes wish that you could go back and do high school again? Just wait, hear me out. Some of you are like, no, never. <laughs> but do high school again, knowing what you know now and understanding life the way you understand it now and understanding yourself the way you understand yourself now and go back and do it. Not necessarily as a grown up, but with the knowledge and wisdom and understanding you have now as your teenage self and do things differently. Don't you sometimes wish that you could do that? I know I do for sure. And there are several things that I know now that I wished, I wish that I had known when I was in high school that I know would have changed my whole experience or at least a big part of it, and probably what would have come out of high school with far fewer uh, emotional battle wounds, <laughs> and I would have had to spend a lot less time doing my own work <laughs> to undo some of those things that I went through, that I felt, that I thought, that I experienced, all of it. But today I wanna to talk about a few things that I did that I do wish that I had known in high school that I do know now. And maybe I wouldn't know all these things now without having gone through all of that hard stuff so that I had to do my own digging and my own work in order to get to where I am now. But I feel like I just sort of entered the matrix of like then and now and time and when happened what. So we're just gonna talk about these five things. And I also wanna hear from you in the comments things that you wish that you had known in high school that you know now, and we can crowdsource in that way as well. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you're back, it's always good to have you. Say hello. Either way, oh, you can subscribe to the channel if you hit the button about right down there. Then you get notifications when my new videos come out. Um, yeah, either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, that so many of you here are a part of. So if you are in The Shift Society, take a second, identify yourself as a shifter in the comments so that I can say hello to you. Um, I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And a lot of the things that we thought, that we felt, that we believed about ourselves, others, life and the world in high school, we have taken with us into adulthood and continue to see things that way. And in a lot of ways, many of those ways that we are seeing things can be getting in our way and holding us back. And so for me, it took work into adulthood to really look at these beliefs that I had, these things that I went through, this pain that I experienced, these struggles that I had in high school. It took work into adulthood to really get in there and see what was going on and do the work to undo that and unlearn a lot of that stuff. And so I'm going to talk to you about five big ones that made a big impact on me. And again, I want to hear from you, the ones that you have been working on, that you have worked through, or maybe that you want to start working on, um, things that you wish that you had known when you were younger, but you are starting to understand and want to maybe even understand more and believe more now. So for me, the first one, the first thing that I wish I'd known in high school that I know now is that being cool is highly overrated. It took me a long time <laughs> to accept the fact that I am not cool. I have never been cool. I will never be cool. I do not have the cool gene. <laughs> I don't know what that gene is. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what that gene was, or I mean, obviously it's not a gene, but trying to figure out what it took to be cool and spent a lot of time not liking myself and feeling bad about myself and feeling stupid and feeling silly and feeling like an outsider because all I wanted to do was be cool. But the other truth is that a lot of the things that the cool people were interested in were not the things that I was interested in. I think part of being cool means that you kind of have to be chill about stuff. You kind of have to not take life or situations or whatever is happening too seriously. Now, the truth is for me, I have no chill. 
<laughs> I take things seriously. I think about things deeply. When a lot of the other girls wanted to have conversations about hair and makeup and boys, I wanted to talk about the deep inner workings of the human experience. I wanted to understand, you know, why the bully felt the need to treat others that way. What was going on at home that led this person to be acting out like this? You know, what caused these girls to backstab each other and, and talk behind each other's backs? What was going on with them that they felt like they needed to treat other people badly in order to make themselves feel better? Why weren't they feeling good about themselves? So these were the kind of things that I wanted to talk about, that I was thinking about, that I wanted to bring up in conversation. Obviously, not the coolest things to talk about <laughs> when you're 15, 16, 17 years old. And so it took me a while to really just accept that I'm not cool. And as soon as it was actually really, I remember it was, it was just a few years ago. It was in the last 10 years that I finally just embraced the fact that I am not cool. I will never be cool. And I'm cool with that. But it took some work to really just be able to say that. And I wish that I had known that then. I wish that I had known that I don't need to be cool. I just need to be myself and find other people that were on the same wavelength instead of trying to be on a different wavelength with these other so-called people, these other groups, these other, uh, yeah, these other individuals, instead of trying to be on their wavelength, being on my own wavelength and then finding other people that were on that same wavelength it would have saved me so much grief, so much frustration, so much feeling bad about myself, that I wasn't that, that I wasn't part of that. I kind of wish I'd known that now and just said, forget it, to the whole thing a lot earlier. And then piggybacking on that, the next thing that I wish that I had known in high school was that even though I wasn't cool, I was still an awesome person. So often we are waiting to give ourselves permission to have th certain thoughts, beliefs, or feelings about ourselves until everybody else thinks that way too, right? So if everybody likes me and approves of me and thinks that I'm fun and interesting and great to be around and they wanna be around me all the time, unless that happens, then I am not gonna feel good about myself and Everyone needs to think that in order for me to feel good about myself. But just a second, it's not even that. Let's be honest, it's not about everyone thinking that way about us. It's not about everyone liking us. It's about specific people that we have selected as the judge and jury. It's certain people that we have decided that I need this person or this group of people or you know these particular individuals I need them to like and approve of me and want me in order for me to feel good about myself. And if they don't, then I can't. And so then we base our thoughts and feelings about ourselves on these, the opinions or the preferences or whatever that is of these certain people. And have said, if they don't want that, then I must not be good enough. I must not be lovable enough. I must not be interesting enough. I must not be valuable enough. And my question is, how many of you are doing that now? Are you continuing to do that? Are you continuing to base what you are going to let yourself think about yourself on particular people from your past or even your present on their thoughts about you, on how they feel about you, about whether or not they've decided that they want to be with you or to have you in their life or to be close with you? Have you told yourself that because this person, either friendship-wise or family-wise or even romantic-wise, that if they've decided that they don't want to be close with me, they don't want me, then that makes me unlovable. That makes me not good enough. Are you outsourcing your worthiness to the opinions, ideas, or preferences of a select few or maybe even a select one instead of knowing within yourself that you are allowed to feel like you're an awesome person without 
even that person that you have been thinking about, even without them thinking that, even without them wanting to be around you all the time, even without them wanting to be close with you, that doesn't take away from your belief that you are allowed to feel like you are an awesome person. You're allowed to feel good about yourself. You're allowed to be disappointed that this person doesn't want to be close with you. This person doesn't want a connected relationship with you. You're allowed to feel sad about that. You're allowed to grieve that. You're allowed to feel disappointed by that. But letting that take away from your sense of self-worth, it's just not necessary. And it's just not true. Feeling good about who you are comes from believing that you are allowed to feel good about who you are as you are, even without the approval of these certain people or even this one certain person. If you have people in your life who love and value you, focus on them. We so often focus on the people who don't and forget to really be grateful for the people who do. And then the next thing that I wish I'd known in high school that I know now is that belonging is so much more important than fitting in. And the things we do to try to fit in block us from feeling like we truly belong. Because fitting in is all about who I need to be to get you to like and approve of me. So it's pretending to like things that we don't like, to value things that we don't value, to be certain ways that are not consistent or congruent with who we are, all in our attempts to try to fit in. So then if we are accepted into the group by being this sort of made up version of ourselves, people aren't connecting with the real us and we know it. And so we don't feel like we belong because we've been faking it the whole time. Instead of finding the people that like you and accept you for who you are. People who don't require you to be something that you're not in order for them to like you or approve of you. And then really focusing on those people and those relationships even if they're not the types of people that you want, that you think would like raise your status or whatever to be friends with, all of that stuff is just a made up kind of hierarchical crap anyways and doesn't doesn't matter. And the things that we do to try to achieve that instead of just being like, how about I just be myself and find other people that value that and that value me for that and that I value for that. And we just let go of all the charades letting ourselves be who we are and so that we can connect with other people in an authentic, real way. That's belonging. And then the next thing that I wish I'd known in high school that I definitely know now is that failure is a good thing. When we were in high school, and for many among us, even as adults now, we think that failure means that we are not good enough, that we don't have what it takes. We stop ourselves from doing things because we are afraid of not getting the result that we want because we're afraid of looking silly or we're afraid of what that's gonna mean about us. But instead of being afraid of what that means about you, be proud of what that means about you because failure means that you showed up. Failure means that you stepped up. Failure means that you participated in life and you took a risk. That's not something to be ashamed of. That's something to be proud of. You can't fail if you're sitting on the sidelines. You can't fail if you're hanging out in the bleachers. You can only fail if you are getting on the field and you are playing and that takes courage, that takes guts, and a lot of people won't do it because they're afraid of a bruised ego. Instead of putting ego aside and saying failure doesn't mean that I'm not good enough, failure means that I am courageous enough. And I wish that I had known that in high school, the things that I stopped myself from doing because I was afraid of not being good enough. I was afraid of not getting the result that I wanted. I was afraid of getting turned down. I was afraid of getting rejected because I was afraid of what that, what that was gonna say about me. And I wish that I had known that it was okay to just try things, do things, 
if I don't get it, if it doesn't turn out, if I don't make it, that's okay. I put myself out there and I tried it. And chances are, if I keep trying different things and putting myself out there in different ways, I'm gonna get it. Some things are gonna work out. Some things are going to go well. And then that means I get to have that much more of a rich, rewarding and fulfilling life. And so for even for those of you now who are watching this as adults, thinking about the things that you're not doing because you're afraid, not because, you know, not you're afraid that if you just like start, start your own business without any kind of plan or, or background or financial backing or anything like that, any kind of understanding of how business work that you're like, oh, I'm afraid of just like, um, quitting my day job and mortgaging my house to invest in this thing that I really have no idea what I'm doing. Maybe that's a healthy fear. <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of fear. I'm not talking about fears of things actually becoming destructive or detrimental Detrimental if you're doing it. I'm talking about the things we are holding ourselves back from because of ego threat, because it'll hurt our feelings or we'll feel bad about ourselves if it doesn't work out, that we'll make it. It, it won't hurt our feelings and it won't, um, it won't make us feel bad about ourselves. We will make ourselves feel bad about ourselves by the thoughts we think about what we make the failure mean. So really looking at that, how many things in your life are you stopping yourself from doing because you're afraid of failing? You're afraid of not even failing, even not being perfect at it, not being the best at it, it not being as straightforward and easy as you thought it would be. And then what you are going to make that mean. And you're afraid of having to face yourself, your own thoughts about what you're going to make that failure mean. Just really thinking about that. Is it necessary? The next thing that I wish that I had known in high school, that I again definitely know now from firsthand experience, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute here. But the truth is, high school is hard for pretty much everyone. I remember thinking, um, why, is, why is this so hard for me? Why do my emotions feel all over the place? Why do one minute I feel like I'm doing okay and the next minute I feel like a loser? Why do one minute I feel like I have friends and the next minute I feel like I have no one? Why does one minute I feel like I know kind of what I'm doing with my life and the next minute I feel confused and lost and overwhelmed? Why does one minute I feel like I know what's going on and I feel invested and involved and the next minute I feel like I got nothing. I got nothing going for me. And realizing that those are, were not thoughts and feelings exclusive to me. Knowing that pretty much everyone in high school is feeling similar things. Some people acted out in different ways. Some people push it down in different ways. Some people are really good at making it seem like they don't have those thoughts and feelings. But most people are feeling that way. And I know this because I've had a lot of clients in my life, in my career as a therapist. I've seen a lot of people as a therapeutic coach. I've worked in, uh, in the membership community, in the Shift Society, and seeing people have, having similar thoughts and feelings and having had those similar thoughts and feelings in high school. I have worked with thousands of people and heard stories from thousands of people who have thought and felt, or who did think and feel the exact same things and went through the same things, whether or not they were part of the cool crowd or part of the band crowd. Not to say that band isn't cool. It depends on what you define as cool, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Regardless of the group or crowd, most people were struggling to figure out who they were and where they fit in and whether or not they were good enough. And that's just the truth. And for me, there was something really healing about that to know that there wasn't something wrong with me for thinking and feeling those things, that that's just part of it. For better or worse, that's part of this coming of age process as we're individualizing and moving more into and towards adulthood and having that autonomy and really just figuring out 
who we are. It's hard. Sometimes it's really painful. And some among us are still going through that and dealing with that. And knowing that that also is really common. You might be thinking to yourself now as an adult, I still don't have that all figured out. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. If we haven't actually taken the time to do the work, it doesn't just automatically fix itself. If I hadn't done this work on myself, I wouldn't be where I am now. If I hadn't used the tools that I, many of the tools that I teach to both my clients and that I teach in the shift society, if I hadn't been using those same things with myself, I wouldn't be feeling about myself the way that I feel about myself now. I wouldn't be showing up uh, in the world the way that I am showing up now. These things that I wish that I had known in high school, maybe they would have changed the trajectory of my life. Maybe things would have been easier. Definitely, I would have felt better about myself. And although I didn't know them then, I am so grateful that I know them now. But I want to hear from you. Which one of these are you like, yeah, I wish I'd known that in high school now and I've been working on that or I've worked through that and I believe that now. Or you're like, yeah, you know what? I struggled with that then and I struggle with that now and I really want to work on that. If that's true, then get on the wait list for the Shift Society. The link is right down in the description. This is a big part of the work that we are doing in there. We are looking at the thoughts and beliefs that we have that are not doing us any favors about ourselves, about others, about life, about the world. We are really looking at the ones that are not helping us, that are holding us back. And then we are getting them out, working them out, and then putting back in ones that are, that are there to propel us forward, that are there to allow us to live more fully and freely as ourselves on the short time, in the short time that we're here. As you get on the wait list for the Shift Society, the link's down in the description. But again, I wanna hear from you. Which things that you believed in high school that you know are not true now, that you'd wish you'd known then. So what things do you know now that you wish you'd known in high school? Let me know in the comment section below. Always good to be with you. Until next time, take good care.